because if you want to do good business, sell the way your customers want to buy, not the way you want to sell. And that's why I think there's the death of that traditional American sales model, um, you know, perhaps needs to be put back in the cupboard and we take all the good stuff we've learned about how to be great salespeople. Welcome back to the Talking Sales series. And I have Sue Barrett with me again. Hello, Sue. How are you? I'm well, John. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to have you here with us, Sue. Uh, and and I, I want to put a bit of a challenge on the table. I've read a headline of yours, which basically said, death of the American salesperson or salesman. Mm. Oh, that's a bit pointed and almost racist in the way it's expressed. What do you mean by that? Well, it's kind of a play on the, you know, the Arthur Miller play, Death of a Salesman. And, um, but I was particularly looking at um, some of the hyper-aggressive sales strategies and tactics and methodologies that have been um, foist upon the world by some people, particularly coming from um, America. Well, um, Amer America has brought a lot of really good practices uh, in business generally and, and, uh, and sales specifically, but I agree with you. Uh, the American culture uh, of the way they do business uh, in the past has been quite, uh, I'm not sure if aggressive is the right word, word very tenacious uh, and um, sometimes questionable. Um, a lot of them are moving away from that, though, in, in my view, but you're probably right. It still influences a lot of the world and in, in America particularly. So what are you saying? What are we going to do about this? Okay, well, what we're looking at is um, good selling is always something where you work on something together. You don't push things at people. You mean um, together being the... the Client and, and client yeah, and well, the organised, yeah, 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 the client and, and, and the salesperson, you know, the supplier, the client, how you even want to look and at it vendor, as well. Whatever, yep, vendor-client yeah. relationship. And, and you've, got to, you've got to give the Americans, generally speaking, credit for being really sassy and good self-promoters, very proactive. I mean, you can see that culturally that, you know, it's this, you know, the ideal of, you know, you can be what you want to be and all of those sorts of things and you've got to go after it. So... I don't have an issue with the proactivity and the and the kind of the endeavour that the Americans create because that is very true. Good sales anywhere, you've got to be on the front foot and proactive. You've got to get yourself in front of the people that know about you. In, in another American word in this context that they use a lot is hustle, right? They've got to be really good hustlers getting out there and doing the right, uh, doing. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of. The word hustle to me has some negative connotations to it. I, I totally I, agree. I, I, I totally it. agree. I get it. I get it. You know me, I'm a science nerdy person and I like really clear definitions about things. So, you know, I mean, credit to the to the you know, to that American endeavor. Get out there, get things going, get things happening. But sometimes it's just too much. And I think some of the American myth sales methodologies fundamentally skill-wise and process-wise okay, but the approach that they take hasn't been um, culturally neutral. It doesn't always translate very well, that sassiness, that kind of in-your-face kind of thing. It doesn't translate very well into other countries and other cultures. And you'll find that people kind of shy away from that because they have an approach uh, to developing relationships, which may be a bit more subtle um, or slightly you know, different from an American cultural nuance. So I think one of the biggest issues is with the death of the American salesman is that um, it's, it needs to be more culturally aware and sensitive. So um, it's still got to be honourable and ethical. And I think when we're looking at how we do business with each other, what we need to do is look at the skills and capabilities that we need to be able to master at a culturally neutral level and then apply cultural sensitivities on that. That's what we've been doing. We've been building out a whole range of things where it's culturally neutral. And then when you take it into whether it's Brazil or to China or to Europe or, or other, other nations, Australia, you actually find that you can develop the capabilities and then you apply the cultural aspects or nuances in those situations. So you can still see what they're doing, but it's not in that kind of more brash, at least to what maybe others perceive, as a more brash, in-your-face kind of super assertive approach that the Americans might take. 
This reminds me of a discussion I had with Kian McLaughlin. Uh, he does all the win-loss reviews uh, and, he, and he's talking to customers all the time about why they made the decision, how they made the decision and so on. Uh, and when I asked him once, what are the customers telling, are the, telling him are the greatest, um, the aspects of the greatest salespeople that have ever sold to them? And, and you know, the bottom line was very strong EQ, uh, humble, um, slightly introverted on the extroverted, introverted curve, uh, and things like that. Um, and he was talking globally, it wasn't just Australia. Mm. And so really that's what you're saying is, is, is these days we need to have that sort of behavior, that sort of capability with very high IQ and empathy, being able to work with our customers and not run roughshod over them. Oh, well, the world's complex and there's, you've got to work in collaboration with each other. And that means you have to have a sensitivity to understand and listen to each other. There's some other interesting aspects as well that may have created that kind of overly assertive kind of, well, potentially pushy approach to selling. Uh, that the that we can often feel or, or perceive from outside in to America, looking to America, is that the way people are remunerated too. Um, you find that there's a lot of, um, at least that I know of so far, and from recent feedback, but it could have changed, is that there's a lot of um, commission oriented, or you know, your butt's pretty close to the bitumen in terms of sales results in the US. And there's also a very strong money orientation. So money is a, is a, is a primary motivator for a lot of people in sales in the US, from what we understand culturally. But for a lot of people in other countries, whilst we obviously want to make money, um, many of us are usually paid reasonable, you know, base salaries. Um, that sort of pure commission or very high commission approach to selling isn't the standard operating procedure in other countries. And so you find that motivational, uh, what's motivating people isn't necessarily the money card, it's being of service and supporting people. And on top of that, if you do it well, you can have a bonus or an additional aspect. But you know that, that kind of personal endeavor in the US and you can make it also comes with the fact that you're not gonna get much support to make it, you better actually prove yourself. So that changes your motivation and your orientation and what's driving you often. And if you're worried about putting money on the, you know, putting money on the table to support yourself and you've got a customer there and you need to make a sale, this is not just American, this is anyone. If, if, you, if you're not making much money and you've got to make, you know, pay the mortgage, then it plays with your um, motivations in terms of being customer centric or helping that customer. Because ultimately, if you're running a bit short, you then become self-serving, not we collective serving. So you've got to be careful here. And I'm kind of dancing around the edges a bit. So we've got to look at what motivates and drives people, but also how they're set up to succeed. If they've got to survive on their own, then that kind of sassiness, that real, you know, aggressive kind of push to get stuff happening, you can understand why it would be that way. Um, but that's not how everyone is necessarily set up. And so, again, being customer centric and working on complex issues and things with clients, if you've got most of your uh, remuneration caught up in, I sell this product versus that, you can't do complex selling because it messes with your brain. No. And the reality is, uh, in this day and age, we've all learned that we're no longer product selling anyway. We're in no. there to help the, the client achieve outcomes they're looking for. And we've got to get our mindset around that. We've got to get our attitude around that. We've got to be focused very much on helping the client achieve outcomes, knowing as long as we manage it, knowing we'll be able to get our, our return through reciprocity um, rather than the other way around. I agree. I agree totally. Uh, I, I think that apply, it's starting to apply more and more in America as well. Uh, and, but you're right, there's different cultures in different parts of the world and we need, need to be sensitive to those and the way we engage. Well, I think in the 21st century, you know, from gender inclusivity, diversity, understanding all sorts of people who could be customers of ours, teammates of ours, you know, all sorts of people that we're into integrating and working with. Um, we, need to, we need to be skillful and we need to know how to run great sales teams and operations and be skillful as salespeople. But I think now it's time for all of us to understand consciously that we need to be culturally aware and sensitive 
And I'm not trying to sound all, you know, manby pamby because if you want to do good business, sell the way your customers want to buy, not the way you want to sell. And that's why I think there's the death of that traditional American sales model, um, you know, perhaps needs to be put back in the cupboard and we take all the good stuff we've learned about how to be great salespeople and just make sure we're culturally aware and sensitive and adapt that accordingly. Totally agree. I'm with you on that one, Sue. Thank you very much for sharing those thoughts and uh, I hope we haven't been too insensitive to all the Americans out there. Uh, we, you do a great job, but yeah, we, uh, the world is moving on and uh, cultures are different around the world and we need to be ready to understand and adapt to that. Sue, so, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.